Hello, everyone, and welcome to this September LifeWave Connect product edition. We're so glad that you chose to join us and spend a few minutes with us today. And we have so many things to talk about. Uh, some amazing, amazing updates around August was just a phenomenal month for uh, for LifeWave, just record breaking and just so much gratitude there. We'll talk about a little bit about that. We've got a couple of updates. And then, of course, uh, this is a LifeWave Connect product. So we plan to talk on X39 and Eon today as well. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring on our CEO, founder, and inventor of LifeWave Technology, David Schmidt. David, how are you? Great, Jeff. Great to see you. Yeah, you too. So David, let's talk about August for just a second. Just an incredible, incredible month at LifeWave. Uh, in many, many ways. Uh, I think first, you know, uh, on the business side, it was the biggest month in the history of the company. And uh, and that doesn't happen without uh, great leadership from our field and uh, our incredible brand partners and customers. So everyone played a role in that. So, uh, you know, I think the first thing is, as you said, we want to extend, uh, you know, our thanks and appreciation. Uh, you know, the other side, what was going through my mind is um, we had these terrible fires in Maui. And uh, if. Uh, people that are on with us today aren't aware of it. Um, we uh, quickly facilitated donations to the Red Cross and the Convoy of Hope to help provide people with uh, medical relief, uh, provide food and water to children, medical aid. So, you know, our hearts really go out uh, to the people who are there during this tragedy. And it really, uh, to me, you know, underscores that as we're more and more financially successful, not only can we make these donations, but we can put more money into our research and have things like humanitarian drone that can directly uh, provide aid. So uh, a lot of things to be um, certainly thankful and appreciative of. And uh, our hearts certainly go out to people, not only in Hawaii, but people globally that are in suffering and, and need help. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. And, uh, you know, another thing that happened this August, which, um, you know, it was at the beginning of the month. So it's, it's, it seems like ages ago, but we reopened the Canadian market as well, which had, had been closed for a little bit. So that was another piece of really exciting news to be able to get the products back in Canada and be able to uh, serve our customers and brand partners there as well. Yeah, you know, it was very unusual what uh, the Canadian government did. You know, this was kind of a sweeping change uh, across the country and across different industries. And when we hired an attorney in Canada to help us with this, they said, you know, we're seeing this across the board. The Canadian government wants to slow down the economy. And we never really got a good reason for why that's the case, but they were blocking many companies uh, from doing business in Canada, and they didn't really ever give us a reason uh, as to why they wanted us to stop selling product. But of course, everything turned out great. Uh, we made the decision to financially support our uh, brand partners in Canada and let their commissions keep going and uh, keep them active. And uh, so that turned out to be a, you know, a great decision, decision I would certainly make again. And uh, you know, the result was because uh, you know we formed this partnership with our brand partners in Canada. They stuck with us and uh, we've come back stronger than before. So uh, a lot of thanks and appreciation to our community in Canada. Yeah, for sure. You know, and you talked uh, at the beginning of the call, just this this incredible growth that we've been experiencing uh, over the past, you know, years, actually, uh, you know, even since the X39 launch, just a continued steady uh, growth path. And with growth, uh, you know, obviously comes changes and with growth comes, you know, uh, things that we have to make adjustments to and things. So I know that there were a few, you know, a few adjustments we made to our website and some other things. And I just wanted to see if you wanted to spend a minute to kind of address and talk through some of those things uh, before we get started into the product. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, we have made to the U.S. website. Mm -hmm. uh, U.S. has grown incredibly fast. Uh, you know, we have a number of leaders in the United States that are driving this growth. We're, we're just doing a phenomenal job. And uh, the U.S. is the fastest growing market and the largest market in the world for us. And uh, we've crossed a threshold now uh, where we've got on the radar uh, with the FDA. So we've had a great relationship with the FDA uh, since the beginning of the company. Um, 
We got our first visit from the FDA in 2005. So we get regular inspections and have regular dialogue with them. So they basically approached us and said, you know, look, um, there are changes coming with how we're dealing with stem cells. And the way we look at the FDA's position is the way we look at this is that uh, when we think of stem cells, it's by injection. And that means stem cells are a drug. Uh, that's the way it's going to be regulated. So any company, even if you have a natural product and you're making a claim about stem cells, we're going to treat it like a drug claim. So I personally don't think that's fair. Stem cells are naturally occurring within the human body. They shouldn't be regulated that way. So the, the trend is something we should be concerned about and be aware of. But the bottom line is we need to comply with these changes and protect the company. So we're doing a few things. The first thing is in an immediate response to this, to protect the company, uh, we made changes to our claims on our US website. And uh, we also moved the studies to the back office. So if um, you go to the back office, you can access the studies uh, in the resource section. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for this is that uh, the way the FDA and the FTC looks at it is that if you've done a study, it forms a claim. And our patches do, of course, a lot more than what we see. Day, so we had to make those uh, studies private at this point. Now, uh, Jeff, as you know, our staff has talked about this. And in only a month from now, when we get into convention, uh, we're going to announce some very, very positive changes and upgrades to the website to address the uh, the uh, interaction that we've had with FDA. So what I would say is if you're going to the U.S. website, and the claims on our products now are very restricted. It's only going to be for the next, let's say, 30 days. Then we're going to make some announcements at convention, and then you'll see some things start to get back to normal. Uh, so if you can bear with us a month, uh, I promise you there's great things ahead. Yeah. Well, the incredible, uh, incredible burden that comes with with growth and exposure and uh, you know, again, just so grateful for all the work that uh, that everyone's doing. It really is a a, a, tr a tremendous sign of success and and of of all the the lives that are being in, uh, touched and and changed through these products. So, yeah, okay. absolutely. And we have a responsibility uh, to protect our community, uh, mm -hmm. protect the company, and make sure you know that um, we have a long term business opportunity. We're, we're coming up on twenty years in business, and that doesn't happen by accident. So, you know, we're here for the long haul. The other thing I would say is uh, to give people some, I, I think, some satisfaction and confidence through this process is if we look at, uh, I'll use the essential oil companies in our industry. You know, they're uh, the two big companies are each over a billion dollars. And uh, we know that essential oils do a lot more than what those companies claim. There's a very, very long history on the safety and efficacy of essential oils. Um, but the FDA regulates any product you inhale as a drug. So those companies ha have had to deal with this that they can't really say very much about what their products do, yet you know they've gotten to be over a billion dollars and certainly a lot more than that. So the message here is we're going to be fine. Uh, we're doing everything to remain compliant. People know, thank God, because of network marketing, uh, that they're able to share the benefits, see the testimonials. Um, I had a conversation with a surgeon yesterday who said after... 90 days of using your product, I'm a different person, you know, for the better. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue to grow and be successful and uh, it'll be great. Yeah, perfect. As a reminder, even just a, a very proactive approach. So, you know, just getting uh, getting ahead of things there. So, well, let's, uh, David, if you're okay with it, I'd love to jump into the content. And just as a reminder of, uh, you know, to everyone listening today, if you have questions, uh, we love to answer those at the end. And so there's a Q&A box at the bottom, go ahead and put them in there and and then, uh, you know, as we have time at the end, we can get to some of those. But today we're here to talk about uh, X39 and Eon. Yeah. And Jeff, uh, today, uh, the, the direction we're going to go in with this 
is to look at the effects of stress on the body. Oh. So, of course, Eon is a product that was specifically designed to reduce stress. There's actually a whole substory to Eon, uh, but it was specifically designed to reduce stress. And our clinical studies have shown it does exactly that. And what's so interesting, um, when we're measuring effects in the nervous system, in the autonomic nervous system, you have uh, what's called a sympathetic and a parasympathetic drive. So sympathetic means uh, people are in a mode of fight and, and in parasympathetic, you're in a mode of relaxation. And uh, what we found with the Eon patch uh, is that immediately after applying it, regardless whether or not someone is, was in a state of deep relaxation or someone was in a state of uh, agitation, they moved into a place of balance. And that's incredibly important because when people are too far to the left or right, uh, it actually has an adverse effect on the immune system. Um, my daughter was saying to me today, you know, dad, I, I went and uh, went to a sauna, I did a detox, I felt great. I did it the other day and I'm thinking about doing it three days in a row. What do you think? And I said, don't do it. Don't do it because uh, you, you can get too relaxed. Uh, it's like people like uh, I'll pick on Mariah Carey, who's, you know, unbelievably gifted with her voice, but she sleeps 12, 13 hours a day. Uh, and uh, the problem is that you depress your immune system at that point. So it, it's a unobvious uh, stress, <laughs> maybe. We're all familiar with, you know, the stress of, uh, of working too many hours uh, and those kind of conflicts. Uh, but actually relaxing too much can also depress the immune system. So we want to be in a state of balance, and Eon does that. Uh, X39 also has enormous benefits uh, to people that are under stress by helping to provide a healthy inflammatory response by boosting antioxidant levels and as well as some other things. So um, we're, we're going to uh, dig in now and uh, look at this in more detail uh, because stress is, I would say, the, the, the single biggest thing that people need to do and get under control to have a uh, healthy quality of life and pres preserve their youth and have a life of uh, longevity. So let's get into this in more detail and it will become uh, a little bit more self-evident. So first of all, let's take this from the beginning and identify the problem and look at the effects of stress on the human body. And the main takeaway here is that stress affects every single part of the body. Uh, stress can be physical or it can be emotional. And this is kind of interesting to think about. Uh, there can be positive stress and negative stress. So I would say exercise is a positive stress. Uh, so we're putting stress on the muscle, on the heart, and we're using that as a way to strengthen the body. Fasting is a beneficial stress because uh, there's a number of very favorable uh, outcomes on the body, such as uh, favorable changes in hormones, reduction in body fat, and so a detoxification. So we're going to be talking, of course, about negative stress. Uh, so let's say uh, people uh, like to work a little bit too much. Um, I'm in that category. Uh, or uh, people have some type of, uh, they maybe they have money problems. Uh, they're on the way to work. Their car broke down. Uh, they had a fight with their significant other. These types of emotional uh, stresses lead to measurable physiological changes in the body and measurable biochemical changes in the body. So while these uh, responses may start out in the brain and in the nervous system, uh, it's ultimately going to have uh, the adverse effects are going to show up in the gut 
which uh, affects your immune system. Of course, the adrenal glands uh, can be stressed uh, both short-term and chronically, and even the reproductive system. Uh, so as an example, in men, uh, throughout our lifetime, oxidative stress can damage the Leydig cells in the testes, and this will reduce uh, our levels of testosterone over time and, and also manhood. So um, this is a pretty good article, uh, which gets into how stress uh, has an adverse effect on every single system in the body. Uh, cardiovascular system, which I'll be talking about in detail at convention uh, a month from now, um, cardiovascular system is particularly interesting. Uh, homocysteine is an inflammatory marker, and it's very well known, um, especially in uh, people of Chinese uh, descent, that uh, elevated levels of homocysteine leads to uh, impairment of the cardiovascular system and increased risk of heart disease. Uh, we certainly know because of COVID that elevated levels of fibrinogen um, it can lead to uh, myocarditis and uh, can again increase risk of heart attack and stroke. So this obviously becomes a significant problem, right? So we wanna do everything we can to mitigate stress. We're all gonna have stress in our lives. The question is, how do we manage it? How do we deal with it? What kind of tools can we use? And this doesn't wanna come up, let's see. All right, well, this was supposed to be a page. Let's see what happened to my computer here. This was supposed to be a page to show you uh, symptoms. Uh, and it's, you know, it's kind of self-evident. Let's minimize that. Here we go. Uh, the symptoms of stress are self-evident, so we don't need to pay a lot of uh, attention to it. But, you know, if you have on a regular basis, you're getting neck tension, you're getting uh, headaches, any type of pain, chest pain, uh, you're unusually fatigued. Um, you know, we can all have days where, you know, we're off. Maybe we didn't eat healthy. We didn't get enough sleep. So really what we want to do is look at patterns. Uh, is this a regular condition? And we need to pay attention to this because these effects are cumulative. Uh, so if we have headaches or neck pain, neck tension as a regular occurrence in our lives, uh, this should be a signal that we need to deal with this. We can't just dismiss it. So in line with this, uh, there is a very definitive relationship between stress and chronic illness. Now, I'm gonna tell you right away uh, that there is one single thing that you can do, and it can start right now, uh, if you wanted to, that will mitigate the effects of stress on the body. And this is absolutely measurable. It may come as a surprise to some of you, but it is adopting an attitude of love towards others. The emotion of love is perhaps the greatest stress reliever that exists. In clinical studies, it's shown that when people are in a state of anger, they generate inflammation, oxidative stress, they damage the brain, the nervous system, the cells. When people are in a state of love and they increase production of the hormone oxytocin, it actually has the opposite effect. What it does is it regenerates tissues in the body. People that are in a chronic state of love, their muscles act and perform like those of someone in their 20s. So when we are in a state of gratitude, in a state of showing mercy and love towards others, uh, we're doing simply something unbelievably great for ourselves and for others. So um, keep that in mind. 
Uh, but there is this relationship between stress and illness. So this is, again, we won't spend a lot of time going through this, uh, but this is a um, this is a good article uh, to get an overview on it. Um, but needless to say, chronic stress is life-threatening. It will catch up with you eventually. So, you know, what can we do about this? Um, to define this even a little bit more, uh, there are any number of health problems that are directly related to stress. Some of them are obvious and some of them are not. One that I think is obvious is uh, heart disease. And again, I'm gonna be going through this in uh, great detail at convention in exactly a month from today. Uh, but if you're someone that suffers with high blood pressure, uh, you have blocked arteries, uh, you're at risk for heart attack or stroke, and you want to know what natural solutions exist. Uh, I'm going to cover that in great detail. If you've got high blood pressure, we're going to talk about those solutions. If you have uh, arteries that have accumulated plaque, you've got reduced blood flow, reduced circulation. We're going to talk about all the natural solutions that exist to reverse that problem. But one of the things that you can do is to get your stress under control. Um, when you're in a state of uh, emotional stress, it can aggravate uh, asthma and bronchitis. Uh, we're going to talk about this in just a moment. Probably mostly everybody is interested in reducing belly fat. Well, uh, stress definitely adds to the problem of either being able to uh, get rid of belly fat or um, it, stress will add to your accumulation of fat around the waist. We're gonna talk about that actually in a moment in pretty good detail. Okay, so again, we're not gonna uh, spend time going through all of this, but what's important to recognize is that chronic daily stress, if left, uncontrolled can lead to significant health problems, all the major health problems, uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, uh, cancer. Uh, another thing that is worth bringing up here, which I think is self-evident, is the relationship between uh, stress and aging. Now, I've covered this um, previously in uh, with LifeWave Connect uh, at conferences and conventions, but since our goal as a company is to develop technology to stop and reverse the aging process, uh, one of the things that we want to understand, of course, is uh, what are the drivers of aging? And in this particular case, it comes down to oxidative and inflammatory stress. There have been mollusks found that were more than 500 years old, 502 years old, actually. And uh, when they're opened, uh, they're found that they're completely young and these organisms have perfect control over the oxidative and inflammatory process. So in other words, these organisms, they produce energy and they live in a state where oxidation and inflammation do not damage healthy tissue. So they're able to perpetuate and stay young forever. So human beings can learn a lot from this. And in, in fact, uh, we'll talk about that more in the future. Uh, we have our 20 year anniversary coming up and to commemorate our 20 year anniversary, uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, some things uh, relative to age reversal that you will all love and appreciate, I am sure. Okay, so let's talk about this issue. Let's pick um, something that is important to all of us and that is on controlling, preventing, reducing, excess amounts of uh, fat around the waist. 
So this is directly linked to cortisol. There's a number of things that we can do to reduce stress and reduce cortisol and get our belly fat under control. So if you've been on a diet and exercise program and you haven't been able to lose extra belly fat, uh, there's, there's a few things that we can look towards. Uh, what's interesting is that with too much exercise, uh, cortisol levels go up and actually contribute to um, belly fat and uh, or inability to uh, mobilize belly fat. When we fast, uh, especially intermittent fasting, we can change hormones, control stress in a way that contributes to reduction in cortisol and mobilization of fat for energy. Uh, so what this essentially means is that if we keep exercise brief and intense, um, we can minimize our cortisol and uh, maximize our dopamine. Um, another thing about dopamine is really interesting is that uh, I'm going to use uh, Christian Bale and Ben Affleck as an example. Uh, as a superhero fan uh, and looking at how actors transform themselves for movie roles, um, there was an interview with each of them individually. Of course, they both played Batman. And Christian Bale talked about how much he enjoyed the process of transforming his body into Batman. Uh, whereas Ben Affleck said he didn't like exercising, he didn't like working out, it was a struggle getting into the gym, and he hated the process. So not surprisingly, uh, after he stopped filming Batman, Ben Affleck gained a lot of body fat back. Um, so what happens is that when we get into a mindset of enjoying exercise, our dopamine goes up, our cortisol goes down, and we actually get better results. And we could say this about anything. We'd say this about our relationships, around uh, business, any type of activity. If we get into a mindset of enjoying what we're doing, we're gonna uh, we're gonna increase our dopamine in a healthy way, minimize our cortisol, and ultimately uh, get our hormones in check to where we can be burning fat for energy. That, that's, of course, part of the equation. But this is all just to say that when we're under a state of physical or emotional stress and cortisol goes up, our dopamine levels go down, and this is going to contribute to extra body fat. We can think of this as a survival mechanism. You're, historically, your body goes under stress, and we need to hold on the body fat as an emergency source of energy. So if we go back thousands of years ago when there's a um, food shortage, right? There's, there's no uh, supermarkets, no local markets we can go to, uh, and uh, a lot of dangerous things out in the world. Cortisol was a good thing in the sense that we could uh, adapt hold on to body fat and use it uh, as an emergency source of energy. But today, you know, the dynamics have changed and um, we don't have the type, for most of us, we don't have the food shortages that we did, you know, 100 or 1,000 years ago. And so living in a state of chronic stress is not a good thing. So just understand anyway that, that the uh, daily stress that you deal with could be interfering with your ability to burn body fat. Okay, let's move on from that. All right, I've spent a lot of time talking about the problem with stress. Now the question is, what are we going to do about it? Well, here's the good news. We always wanna have good news and we always wanna have solutions. Uh, so the first thing is to form a foundation. Uh, make sure that you're getting enough sleep, you're drinking enough water, you have a healthy diet, you get regular exercise. And the type of exercise that you do is important. Exercise is a very powerful stress reliever and uh, 
also will help you live longer for a whole variety of reasons. So you want to have a foundation, speak with your healthcare practitioner if you need guidance in how to do all those things. Uh, beyond that, though, there are very simple natural interventions that can get your stress under control today. Uh, the first one that I want to deal with, because it's so common, at least 60% of the population have a magnesium deficiency. And um, here's a study which is showing the relationship between magnesium deficiency and stress. It's an obvious one, but I still want to cover it. Now, there are different forms of magnesium. Uh, magnesium oxide is very common. I don't recommend it. Uh, my preference would be magnesium citrate, magnesium glycinate, magnesium taurate. Uh, these are all bioavailable forms of magnesium. Uh, here in the United States, they're very easy to get. Other countries uh, or other regions of the world, especially Europe, some of these forms of magnesium are very difficult to get. Now, for stress, uh, the one specific form of magnesium you can use is magnesium threonate. Now, magnesium threonate uh, crosses the blood brain barrier and induces an immediate sense of uh, relaxation. So, taking, let's say, 200 milligrams at bedtime uh, is going to improve the quality of your sleep. You could take 100 milligrams during the day and get into a state of relaxation. Now, other forms of magnesium, such as magnesium glycinate, which is excellent, magnesium taurate, which is excellent, uh, will also help to manage stress. So the important thing is, um, you know, talk to your doctor about getting 100 to 400 mag milligrams of magnesium daily. Even if you have a good diet, you're probably going to want to consider um, supplementing with magnesium. And the more stress you're under, by the way, the more your magnesium levels are depleted. But this is this is a go-to that should be part of any program for everyone of managing stress. Now, another one that is often overlooked is taurine. Now, in our research we spend a considerable amount of time investigating taurine. Uh, taurine is interesting as an amino acid because it doesn't directly convert over into a protein, and it also functions like an antioxidant. Um, for the men that we have on the call today, if you're under the age of 40, Take taurine daily, and I'm going to tell you why. In animal studies, it's been found that when animals are given taurine, uh, their, the male animals, their testicles do not experience any damage during the course of their life. And as the animals age, their testosterone levels never deplete. So in other words, it seems as if if uh, human males supplement with taurine their entire life, they never have a decline in testosterone throughout their entire life. I would like to have known this uh, as a guy in his 60s. I would love to have known this uh, before I was 40. Um, there's other benefits to taurine. It has uh, benefits on the brain, on the heart, on the energy system, um, as well as other things. Uh, taurine is unbelievable at reducing blood pressure. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, as we're talking about this, taurine has a relaxation effect on the brain and the nervous system and has been even been used clinically to treat anxiety and depression. So uh, talk to your doctor about starting at one gram of taurine uh, you can take it at bedtime to improve the quality of your sleep or take it during the day. Um, and studies seem to show that there's really not 
a toxic effect of taurine. You could take two, three, four grams of taurine, combining it with magnesium is even better. So in other words, I'd say, talk to your doctor about starting with a gram of taurine daily, look at taking it during the day, uh, at bedtime, and then adjust the amount to what you see fit. And you can increase the amount uh, without any type of adverse effects. And in fact, taurine may be one of the most powerful anti-aging nutrients uh, that's ever been discovered and very, very, not doesn't get enough recognition in that regard. Okay. Now, another one I wanna talk about today on stress reduction is theanine. Now, um, hopefully you enjoy green tea. Uh, one of the things that I love about going into Asia, especially Japan, is the green tea. It's phenomenal. And uh, green tea, of course, has a number of antioxidants uh, and it has caffeine, but because it contains theanine, uh, it induces a state of relaxation. Now, theanine, again, like taurine, is extraordinarily interesting because it doesn't directly convert over into a protein and it has a number of beneficial effects on the body. Um, a dose of taurine that would be clinically relevant would be about 200 milligrams or so. So you could take 200 milligrams of taurine in the evening and it help, will help you to relax and improve the quality of sleep. Now, I found a patent once where theanine was part of a complex at improving erectile function. Uh, this is not really obvious or self-evident, probably uh, why this person got a patent on this formula. So, but in, in any case, uh, because theanine does cause relaxation, there seems to be evidence that in men, it may improve testosterone, improve nitric oxide, improve blood flow to the genitals and improve erectile function. Now, there's a lot more to this. And at convention, I'm actually going to be addressing this. But for men that have impaired erectile function or erectile dysfunction, uh, this is an early warning sign of heart disease. And uh, you should be concerned about, uh, you know, not so much your sexual performance, but what does this mean to your cardiovascular system and your cardiovascular health? So this is all to say that uh, first, if you're a man that has erectile dysfunction or you're not pleased with your sexual performance, what you really wanna do is improve the health of your heart first. 60% or 70% of the time, that's gonna correct things. Uh, it's not gonna address the emotional reasons behind erectile dysfunction, but it'll address a very, very, the most common form of erectile dysfunction. I'll get into that in detail at convention. But for right now, know that theanine um, has an interesting role here. And since we're talking about stress, uh, having green tea during the day can help you cope with stress, give you energy, get you antioxidants, or taking a theanine supplement, especially in the evening, can help calm your nervous system down, improve your quality of sleep, improve your hormones, and help you cope with uh, stress the next day. Um, there's other things here too that I didn't get into and list, such as uh, you know taking a warm bath in Epsom salts. It's obviously a little time consuming, and um, with the busy lifestyles that we leave that we lead, uh, most of us would love to be able to take a warm bath every night with some salts or essential oils, but it's not practical. So you know we're covering things that are simple, easy, and inexpensive to do. All right, now before we jump to some questions, uh, I wanted to get into two other things which are relevant for our community, and that has to do with glutathione and copper peptide. Now we talk about a lot about glutathione as the body's master antioxidant. Glutathione has a whole host of benefits. There's new research that has shown that glutathione protects the stem cell function in the body. Of course, it manages stress, manages inflammation, improves 
immune function. And not surprisingly, it helps us cope with stress. So uh, if you uh, don't have a good diet you have, or you have some holes in your diet, definitely recommend uh, that you look at taking a supplement of something like N-acetylcysteine, use our glutathione patch to support healthy glutathione levels, and uh, that will help your body deal with the damaging effects of stress. There, there's actually a whole host of, we could have an entire uh, webinar about just glutathione and its ability to help manage stress in the body. It's that important. And then finally, I think I saved the best for last, copper peptide. So as you all know, I'm a huge fan of copper peptide and a big thanks to Dr. Lauren Picard who discovered copper peptide. And uh, not surprisingly, uh, you know, every time you turn around and look, Seems like copper peptide is good for everything. So not surprising here that copper peptide can be used to prevent oxidative stress and the degenerative conditions of aging. So if we go back and we look at where we started in this discussion, chronic stress leads to accelerated aging. Management of stress is one of the most important things that we can do to preserve our youth and have a healthy and long life. Copper peptide has been shown to be uh, absolutely critical and important in being able to regulate stress. So this is a very good article. Uh, I wanna take your questions since this is running a little bit late, uh, but suffice it to say that this is a great article on the use of copper peptide in managing stress. So, uh, Jeff, there's a lot of information there, but you know the bottom line is that we all deal with stress and there are so many beneficial ways of dealing with it. Having a healthy lifestyle, getting proper rest, uh, drinking lots of water, exercising, eating healthy, uh, using our wellness products like X39 and Eon and glutathione, taking supplements like magnesium, like theanine, uh, like uh, taurine, using these supplements to help manage our stress and inflammation. And uh, it doesn't have to be the massive problem that it is for some people. It's it's manageable. Well, that's amazing. And, and I mean, how relevant? I, I mean, who do we know who doesn't deal with, to some extent, a level of stress? So amazing information and and certainly relevant today. But we do have plenty of questions that have come in. So <laughs> we'll start out with a, a few that uh, kind of work backwards a little bit here. Um, you know, is uh, one one individual said, is there a, a particular copper supplement you can take to help uh, to elevate those peptides? And, you know, would you have a recommendation on what copper supplement or how much someone should take? Yeah. So this is interesting because depending on what studies you look at from from what decade, the recommendation on copper changes pretty dramatically. Right now, the FDA recommends 900 micrograms of copper daily, less than one milligram. I find that to be woefully misleading. I don't know how else to say it because the clinical data on it just doesn't line up. Now, the RDA, the recommended daily allowance, is very different than how much copper do you need for optimum health. And copper is also given a little bit of a bad rap in the sense that uh, there's information out that says, well, you can take too much copper and it's toxic. Well, there's clinical studies that show you could take 30 milligrams to 50 milligrams of copper, and two hours later, uh, two hours later, the body's natural detoxification systems have normalized the levels of copper. So 2.5 milligrams of copper glycinate is very common. Uh, I like amino acid chelates. They're bioavailable, uh, non-toxic. So copper glycinate would be what I'd recommend. Um, getting some chocolate in the diet, uh, I think is pretty good for those people that love liver. Uh, it's very, very rich in copper. Um, but yeah, I would I would say um, 2.5 milligrams of copper daily is awfully good. 
all I heard was chocolate that we could uh, eat chocolate. Chocolate's a good one. Dark, <laughs> dark chocolate. Dark, dark chocolate. chocolate. Dark chocolate of seventy percent cacao and above. Uh, and it's also, by the way, uh, dark chocolate at seventy-two percent and above has been shown to improve the stem cell activity in the body. Um, so lots of benefits to chocolate. Wow. Okay. Uh, you talked a little bit about, uh, well, quite a bit about taurine. And so there were a couple of questions um, surrounding taurine. So I'll take them kind of one by one. Um, but uh, should should women supplement with taurine as well or only men? You talked a lot about the benefits to men. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so truth be told, I do have some self-interest in uh, looking at uh, protecting my testosterone levels as I age. Uh, so <laughs> I, I do tend to look at that. But uh, taurine, um, so we're very, very blessed to work with Melinda and Caitlin Connor. So Caitlin is a PhD. Uh, she did research at Oxford, incredibly brilliant young woman. Uh, we've been uh, very, very blessed to have her as a speaker at our uh, conventions in the past. And uh, so we did a research study together. And uh, the conclusion uh, that she came to is that taurine is something that everyone should be taking, men and women. And the reason is uh, we, we believe based on the research that we collected that it's going to turn out that there is a strong correlation between lifespan and taurine levels. Taurine declines with age. It's found in very high concentrations in the brain, the heart, in the genitals. Uh, it functions as an antioxidant. I think we're going to find that taurine supplementation reduces the risks of Alzheimer's, ALS, dementia. Uh, it improves athletic performance, uh, reduces cardiovascular disease. It, it, it is uh, a miracle supplement for sure. So I, I think that my, my opinion as a researcher is that everyone should be taking taurine and at least a gram a day. Mm, very good. And then just staying on the topic of taurine, you had talked a little bit about, you know, uh, uh, supplementing prior to the age of 40, but can you go into a little bit more detail on why that number, why that age is so important and what happens after age 40? Oh, that's interesting. So, okay. So this uh, specifically was referring to men. So mm -hmm. the study that I was citing was uh, we have to look at, and there's some, there is debate about this, but one of the models for why testosterone levels in men drop, it, it's complicated, but let's say one of the models is that the Leydig cells in the, in the testes that produce testosterone, they undergo oxidative stress with age. And so it's, in other words, if you started out with 100 units of Leydig cells, and over time that got depleted to 90 units, 80 units, 70 units, the amount of testosterone that you could make decreases. So that's one of the models. So taurine, it acts like an antioxidant and it accumulates uh, in the testicles. So what, what's been found is that taurine can block uh, oxidative stress in the testes. So in the animal studies, it was found that the effect was so powerful that as, uh, as uh, in the mice and rat studies that were done, that those animals never experienced a decline in their testosterone levels. Uh, now, Animal studies don't always apply to human beings, but in this case, I would say there's some pretty good justification um, that that would in fact be the case. So, so if I would say for a man under the age of 40, before that oxidative stress takes place, supplement with taurine, and uh, you're going to get a whole host of benefits from that your entire life. It'll be good for your brain, your heart, and also your sexual performance. Uh, but a big one is is uh, protecting uh, cardiovascular health. Very good. Um, very good. Uh, there's a, a question around, is there any connection you see in terms of stress as it relates to hair loss in the studies that you read? Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. Um, 
let's see, how, what can I say that won't get me in trouble? Uh, you know, so talking about hair growth is a medical claim. Uh, so I want to be really careful about how to address this. And I have spoken with, uh, you know, some doctors about this subject. I think what I would say is for a man or woman that is interested in regrowing their hair naturally, um, first they should speak with their doctor about it, but consistently the subject that comes up is microneedling. That if you're, if you're uh, microneedling, that will improve the efficacy of any natural treatment. So this is kind of easy to understand because in on the one hand, what you're doing is you're opening up the pores, but what you're also doing is you're creating stress and that stress actually attracts stem cells. So if we were going to do a clinical study on this, my, you know, what I would do is I, I would say, okay, I'd want to look at a product to improve the number of circulating stem cells in the body, mobilize stem cells, and get them to attract to a site by using something like microneedling. Mm -hmm. So my suspicion is that would be a very, very good approach for hair growth. Perfect. Yeah, but there, there's no question there's a relationship between uh, stress and hair loss. Absolutely. Um, so just talking a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned Eon at the beginning, but um, there's a couple of questions around when is the best time to use it? Where are the best places to use it? Is there any sort of particular time frame in which they should use and then stop using? Can you talk to any of that? Yeah. So Eon is one of those products you can use uh, during the day or at night. Okay. And then... Um, it says, uh, one of the other questions is, is it okay if we place X39 on other acupuncture points than the two points that we recommend in the um, instructions for use? Yeah, so when we do our studies and when we advertise the instructions, it has to match up with the studies. So in other words, when people see the points that we recommend, it's because that's the points that were used in studies. So we have a legal obligation, but as a practical matter, you know, what I do with the Eon patch is I say, okay, let me take my index finger here and, oh, that point over there is a little tense. Uh, so I'll put the Eon patch there. Uh, or sometimes I might just put it on my temple. Uh, so I would say, you know, if people wanted to use the patch that way, uh, you don't have to know acupuncture. Just look for a point of tension on your body, a point that's sore, and apply the product there and you'll be happy with the result. Very good. Uh, and now again, again, just talking about, uh, you know, with the popularity of ice baths and, and saunas and things, uh, the question is coming up is what's the effect of patches, you know, well in a hot, it, does that affect the patch? If they're in a hot sauna, if they're in an ice bath, should they be wearing them or should they take them off for those um, yeah. situations? Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about an ice bath. Uh, and most people aren't going to stay in an ice bath that long anyway, uh, you know, 20 minutes at most, uh, sometimes just three minutes. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about an ice bath at all. A sauna is, is a different story. So we know that elevated temperatures will degrade the patch. Uh, so um, I would say if you're going to go into a sauna for any length of time, you might want to remove the patch. There's no harm in leaving it on. Uh, it's just that you may degrade the patch more quickly with the elevated temperatures. So, um, yeah, so it kind of it's one of those that depends a little bit. Okay, very good. And then I heard you, and maybe this one's a little selfish, but I heard you mention a couple of times around convention and what people can look forward to. And uh, we are we're actually coming right up on uh, for anyone who's uh, you know a member of LifeWave, we're coming up on the deadline for in person registrations on Friday. So if someone were to come to convention or want to come to convention, what are some things they might expect? You've alluded to some great great things, but what kind of experience would you think that they might have? Well, uh, so first of all, um, there, this is going to be the biggest live event that we've ever had. Our events team, as you know, Jeff has done an amazing job. Everyone on our staff has done an amazing job at prepping for this. Uh, you know, planning for an event this size takes a year. Uh, so there's that level of preparation that goes into it. And uh, from my perspective, um, I 
want to provide our community with a number of surprises. Uh, and, you know, the, the experience with LifeWave is we want people to walk away saying, oh, wow, I got so much more than I expected. So that puts a lot of burden on us. And, uh, you know, last year, uh, for those people that were there, we unveiled our humanitarian drone. And that was such a huge uh, success that uh, I spent months thinking about, OK, what can we do uh, for this convention um, that uh, will take people by surprise, but, you know, have some kind of relevance to our community? And uh, we have more than one surprise uh, that's in store. and. Uh, we're going to be unveiling technology uh, that our community hasn't seen before. And that technology is going to have a significant impact on the way that our brand partners build their business uh, in the coming years and beyond, along with some other things. So I would say um, one way to think about convention is that we're kicking off our 20 years in business uh, at this event. So it will be extraordinarily memorable and there'll be a lot of surprises, a lot of reasons to celebrate. Well, I'm excited. Uh, last year was my first LifeWave convention and I've worked in this industry for a long time and it really was something very special. There's just something so incredible about getting together and spending time together and, and uh, you know that association. Well, David, we have just one or two more minutes here. And I know we've talked about the, you know, our gratitude for the community. We've addressed a few things, then obviously an amazing uh, uh, talk on stress here. But as we get ready to, to kind of close things out here, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our, our community, with those listening? Any other words of wisdom or advice? Yeah, you know, I think what I want to say is uh, we just had a leadership event in uh, Italy uh, with the top elite levels, uh, level leaders in the world. And I think what I'd share with our brand partners is how lucky we are to have uh, the leaders that we do around the world. You know, after spending a number of days with them, uh, of course, you know, these are people that I've known for several years anyway, but after spending time with them in August, uh, these are people that deeply care uh, about what it is that they're doing. You know, th this is so much more than just a business. It it's about touching people's lives, improving the quality of life, spreading the message that there's hope and giving hope to others. And so um, we have so much to be thankful for, uh, for the leadership in in the company these are wonderful people that just want to make a difference in the world so i i, I think I, I would say that um the reason why we're having the success we are is because we have these great leaders that care so so very much for their teams and uh, for what it is that they're doing wow incredibly said incredibly incredibly said well uh, we are so grateful for you, David, and for the time that you shared with us and for the knowledge and information. Um, we are so grateful for all of you who have tuned in and who have listened to the, the webinar today and spent some time with us. And with that, uh, we'll go ahead and close this out and uh, we will see you all next month. Wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. Bye. Thanks, everyone.